Welcome back to the 100 games I beat on X show. This is part two of the video where we will focus on the longer games that I beat. Part one that we just finished was the short games that were under 10 hours. Hey, I have now added the longer games that I beat on PS Plus Extra. All right, let's start from the bottom again. Sack boy. PlayStation doesn't really have a Mario type. I mean, we used to have Spyro, we used to have Crash, but PlayStation's really been missing out on a cutesy 3D platformer. I'm gonna put it probably under pretty good. I mean, it, I don't think it's as good as those games. One thing that was unexpected about it is the music. You're gonna be playing this game and then suddenly the music is gonna hit and you're gonna be like, wait, what? Okay, I could, I could rock to this. This is, this is nice. Ratchet and Clank. So this one is in top three. I would say top three games you must play on PlayStation 5. The third one's still coming. Um, you've seen the trailers. You see what they try to show off. They try to show off that there's no loading screens. You're dimension hopping from one level to the next and it's just instantaneous. And it's very endearing. Cause like I said, PlayStation's lacking in characters and this one just delivers. Human Fall Flat. Okay, this one has a really bad rating, but I love these kind of games. I'm gonna say it's not for everyone, but I would definitely recommend it. There's there's even a co-op. There's a couch co-op version of it. I'm pretty sure where you could play as two people. It's ragdoll physics and it's just a lot of fun to play. Teardown. This was, I think, a day one release, was it? I've had a lot of fun with this one. I've been playing it for like a year almost. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna go S tier. We're gonna go S tier with Teardown. It was a lot of fun. And I've only scratched the surface. I just did the campaign. The voxel art's amazing. The lighting is amazing. Like it feels like a next gen game, but also like Minecraft with explosion and trucks. <laughs> Humanity, I think this was a day one release too. It's really good. Kind of went on a bit too long, but for a puzzler, it was really good. So we're just gonna put that in A tier. Detroit Become Human, about AI. I can't really say too much about it without ruining it. I'm gonna, it's almost a must play. It, I would say it's almost a must play. It's up there. Oh, we got two rows in backlog. Okay, Slay the Spire. Oh, what do I say about Slay the Spire? Okay, Slay the Spire is like a deck building game and you're basically doing math and on the surface, it looks really boring. But once you play it, your five hours will turn into like 2000 hours before you know it. It gets really addictive. It's a roguelite, I think. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's you're getting a different run every single time with a different deck build. High replayability. This is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way up here. We're gonna go S tier with this one. I'm thinking of these are the games you would buy. And this is a game that you would like just keep playing over and over and over again. Same with this one. These two games you play over and over again, never ending. Because this one has mods and stuff too. Slay the Spire, highly recommended. A Moonlighter. Okay, I just played this one and beat this one. I really enjoyed it. And speaking of roguelites and procedurally generated or whatever you want to call it different levels every time you play it kind of games this one had an ending that actually explained why why you're getting a different level which i feel like none of the other roguelikes even touch so this kind of ruined the experience of every other game that tries to do a roguelite or a rogue or whatever you want to call it basically a game that the level changes every time you play it this one made sense of that so just for that this one's going all the way to a and it's basically um, a dungeon crawler. So you're dungeon crawling and beating up bosses and little little monsters, but then you're also looting them. And then you have a store. So you come back to the surface world and you have a whole store to manage where you can sell all your things. Not only do you just sell them, but you have to decide what the price is gonna be. So you just choose a random price and then customers will refuse to buy it or customers will be like, oh, this is a great deal. And then you have to go like up and down through trial and error and figure out what the best price for each item is. Sorry, I talked way too much about this game. <laughs> all right. Inscription, very similar to Slay the Spire. I'm gonna put it here for not as high replayability, but way better story. It beats Slay the Spire in story. The game changes and it's more than what it seems. I'll leave it at that. Celeste, this was one of my favorite 2D games to play, like next to Hollow Knight. So this one's going right up top. Celeste is a must play. I wanna say it's not for everyone because the difficulty is kinda of high, but it's very similar to Ghost Runner, which is right under it. This is a 2D version of Ghost Runner, but maybe a little bit harder. I don't know, you're gonna die a lot. Out of all the games on the list, these two games, you're gonna die more than probably all of them combined. One level in this game, you're gonna die more than like a whole row over here. So these guys, Celeste, Ghost Runner, highly recommend, but high difficulty. 
Oh, Shadow of Mordor. I played both of these because they were both leaving extra and I never got to play them back in the day. But this one came back and this one is worth playing. I'm going to put it pretty good because it's kind of old. I think it's like over 10 years by now. It seems kind of dated, but you have to play it just for the Nemesis system. It's a shame to gaming that Warner Brothers decided to patent the Nemesis system and not share with the rest of the world. Basically what the Nemesis system is, is when you fight an enemy and you beat them, they come back and they remember that you fought them and they will have different dialogues and stuff. So every open world game that you're just like beating up baddies and it makes no difference, this one, who you beat up makes a difference because it adds to the story. They'll be like, hey, I remember you beat me last time. And even worse, if they beat you, they get promoted and they remember that they beat you. Like imagine all the games over the past 10 years that could have had that. But no, Warner Brothers had to be dumb and release Suicide Squad. Yeah, good job. Speaking of uh, characters and uh, superheroes, Guardians, um, this, I'm going to put S tier. I'm going to put, it like, could be an A tier, but this is a must play. Like everyone must play this game. If you like the movies or if you were disappointed by all the Marvel games, I don't think there's even a good Marvel game outside of Spider-Man's. This game is a must play. You feel like you're part of the movies. You feel like you're part of the game. The graphics are very next gen. The banter, like it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It's really good. Okay. Returnal. Mm, this one's a hard one because it's not for everyone because it's very difficult. It's a roguelite. But um, yeah, yep, yep. It's the best game of all time. That's it. It's not for everyone. Some people are not going to be good at it. And you're going to play for an hour and you're going to get hit once and then you're going to die and have to start it all over again from scratch. But that's part of the fun, isn't it? Like this is from the same makers as Rezogun and Matterfall. So there's particle physics up the wazoo. It's like one of the best feeling games ever. So these three, I would say, are the best games on PlayStation right now. Like one, two, three. These are the only games that actually use the controller to its ability. Astro, I would say, uses it to its full ability, but these ones, Returnal and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, both use the controller and make it feel like a PS5 game. All these other games, every other game, it feels like a PS4 game, sometimes with like slightly better graphics. But these three games feel like a PS5 game and we're already halfway through its cycle. So I'm... I'm kind of disappointed that we don't have more of these. These are the goats. If there was a, a level above S tier, that's where these S plus, that's where these guys would go. Speaking of Uncharted, this is just under those, like just under them. It's only under them because it's also for PS4, um, but the graphics are so good, even on PS4. The and this is two games, by the way. The story is amazing. The characters are very likable. Like. If you've played any of the old ones, you're, you'll feel so good to be back with the gang. Highly recommend it. It's like Tomb Raider style, but it's Sony's version. Need for Speed Unbound. I just beat this and they just introduced it and it's going away next month. So probably by the time this video is done, you're going to have like two weeks to play it. I personally like these kind of games like N NFS Heat and stuff like that. Like I don't like racing games, but I like like arcadey racing games. So we're going to put it in pretty good. Dave the Diver made a splash when it came to town. Um, it's going S tier. Everyone loves it. It's very addictive, but a little bit misleading. It looks like a cute indie game, but it's like a triple A open world game. Like there's so much to do. It will just, oh my God, there's just so much to do. Like you think it's over and then it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. I mean, you don't have to platinum it like I tried to do, but again, a lot to do. Judgment. Ooh, we're finally getting into the Yakuza style of games. I'm gonna, it's better than pretty good. It's all the way up here. The story is amazing. These games, how do I explain them? Very serious crime dramas, cinematic, great acting, using famous actors from Japan. And then you play the side missions and the side missions are quite silly. But overall, this is one of the newer ones and it looks great. Death Stranding. Oh, here, this is the big three coming up here. This is kind of hard to choose. Okay, Death Stranding. Um, I had fun, but can't recommend. Um, everyone hates this game. It's a walking sim. Just kidding. I spent 110 hours on it to get the platinum, and I can't wait till the second one comes out. This is the, one of the best games I've played. It's going up top. I know a lot of people gave up within like a few hours. They're like, this is the stupidest game, but that's the point of the game. The point of the game is to weed out the week, and the first like five to eight hours, you're just walking, and you have no idea what the game is about, and then the game just opens up later on, and you get V vehicles and zip lines and stuff and then the story is just insane graphics are amazing i can't say enough good things about it actually no i can one more good thing about it this game makes every other open world game feel 
empty. You'll feel like, why am I playing a game just by myself? Am I the only one in the world who plays this game? Which is really ironic because this whole game is about being lonely and alone. But what it does, let me tell you what it does so differently. Your game is connected to other people who are playing the single player. So if someone else in a single player game playing all the way across the country sets up a ladder from here to here or sets up a little bridge to cross this river, you gain access to their gameplay. And the craziest thing is where you walk is being tracked. So if you are always walking point A to point B using the exact same path, remember there is no path, it's just grass, exact same way. And then other players are walking the same way. A path happens, like they keep track of where people are walking from different games. So then you'll see a path. And now there's a path because of our decisions. Insane, can't wait for the second one. Okay, God of War, classic. It's also going, oh, I guess I saved all the best for last, didn't we? You've seen what it's like, boy. I'm just gonna leave it up there. I'm not gonna say much too much about it. And then finally we have Horizon Forbidden West. It wasn't as strong as the first one story-wise, but the graphics are literally the best on PlayStation. Like, mm, I spent more time in camera mode in this game than any other combined. I would say almost more time in camera mode than the whole game, <laughs> but I spent, I got the platinum. So I spent a good like 88 hours trying to get it. Like I, I wanna put it like a low S tier, but kinda wanna go an A. No, no okay, it's, it's there. All right, so. So how are we doing so far? We are, so this is all the short games and long games that I've played on extra that are still on extra. Next, we're gonna add the games that I played that have left extra.